Hola everyone. Hello. Happy Sunday. And uh, regardless of everything that's going on out there, it is a happy Sunday because we are breathing and we are not in the hospital and we are, we are uh, how to come used to say, above the ground. Okay, so let's remember that when we start getting all poor me um, kind of situation, okay? <clears throat> so first I'd like to welcome everybody and thank all of the viewers, everybody that tunes in to, um, to learn how to make these, these uh, recipes and uh, all the faithful ones that are just tuned in every Sunday, like Ceci. Hi, Charmaine. Welcome. Happy Sunday. We're going to make some, um, I'm going to do a series of food that you can make without turning on your, your oven or your stove because, you know, the temperatures are, are hot enough without us turning on the, um, the, uh, the stove. Mara, hola, Mara. ¿Cómo estás, corazón? ¿Cómo está mi... mi Chiquilla, ya bien grandota, ¿verdad? Vamos a hacer un ceviche de atún, bien sabroso. Okay, um, we're going to do our, we're going to light our sage. And remember, this is uh, incense. I understand it's incense, but it's sage incense. So, sage is used uh, in a lot of rituals. Uh, the Aztecs and the Mayas always used it to bless um, their homes, to bless their new ventures bless themselves, to cleanse themselves. So um, I just love uh, sage and, you know, just uh, clearing, clearing the, the area of negativity, negative vibes. Hi, Ceci, I saw you. <laughs> Welcome. Happy Sunday. Okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to do, I lit my sage already. We're going to do our inspiration. Remember, these are already shuffled. Okay, so let's see. If the card that I pull out of here, if it uh, if it resonates with you, just you know write it down and um, and think about it because these are power thought cards for you to really think about what's going on in your um, your situation and your your immediate friends and family and uh, kind of like words for for thoughts you know, for thought. So let's see. I am willing to let go. Okay, I just had to let go of a very, very important um, event that that was going to happen for the next week. And I just had to, to pray about it, to meditate, and just let go. And if it happens um, later, it'll happen. If not, then cool. Um, I need my light on. Um, um, my assistant, can you please turn the light on, the ring light on? I have an assistant. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so let me read that again because this is telling Irma. Hola, Irma, ¿cómo estás? Bienvenida a la cocina, soul food, Zen cooking with Angel. Yeah, I have to start with that every time. I keep forgetting. So welcome to soul food, Zen cooking with Angel Macias. We, we read an inspiration at the begin, beginning of the show every time, and the cards have already been sh um, shuffled a long time ago, so we, we're just pulling them from the top. Uh, and today it says, I am willing to let go. What are you willing to let go? And be okay with it, and just know that the universe is gonna fix things and just, you know, help you out. Um, I release others to experience whatever is meaningful to them. And I am free to create that which is meaningful to me. Okay, you do your thing and I'll do mine. Translate it. <laughs> um, as, long as, as long as it's positive and you're not hurting yourself and hurting others, you know, we'll support you. Support you with whatever it is. Um, Joanna, hi mamas. That's my baby. You always be my baby. I don't care how old you get. Wash my hands. <clears throat> so we can start the, the cooking class. And we're not cooking today. We're just chopping and mixing. But anyways, who's Edith? Hi, Edith. 
We're gonna make some um, tuna ceviche. It's so easy, but it's very healthy. It's very refreshing. You could um, pack it up, take it on a little um, uh, trip to the beach or to the park. Social distancing. Okay, I'm not encouraging you guys to go out there and, and pile on top of each other and not, not respect the social distance, distancing rules. Um, so what you're gonna need for this is, is some um, tuna. So I like solid white albacore tuna. If you don't have this type, it, and if it's too expensive, any type of tuna will do, okay? So just, uh, just you're, you'll just need um, tuna. I'm gonna use four cans for, for this recipe, four cans, and I'm gonna put one carrot per can. So um, four cans of tuna, four carrots, um, maybe like a quarter of this red onion, purple onion. I don't know why we call it red onion, it's not red. Some garlic, Kimberly flowers. Hi, beautiful, how you doing? To my faithful girls, oh, women. Okay. Uh, garlic, tomatoes, lemon, salt and pepper, okay? So today, your donations are gonna benefit our California Families in Focus. Um, buenos dias, Edith, como estas corazón? Uh, our, your donations today are going to benefit the VIP Mentoring Program, which stands for Visionaries Inspiring Purpose. Now, after working all over for, for city, um, state, and, and, um, and uh, the federal government, I just decided to come back and do what's meaningful in my life. It may not be what you want to do, but uh, the nonprofit sector is just, is just me. You know, I love giving and I love um, being able to give. And I'm only able to give if you all give to our nonprofit. See, that's the ripple effect. So when we do something, um, you're helping us. You're helping us um, make a difference in the community. So, <clears throat> who's on there? Maricela. Hi, Maricela. Welcome, welcome to the cooking class. Like I said, we're not going to be cooking today. We're just going to be chopping and mixing. But uh, it's going to be refreshing, healthy, and delicious. Is that Diana? Hi, Diana. Welcome. Happy Sunday, everyone. Wow, I'm so happy everybody's tuning in. Put your little, your little thumbs up, your little likes and your hearts. Just encourage me to, to keep uh, doing this show. Um, it's because of you all that I continued. I just tried it as a test pilot to see if, if, if it had any um, positive reactions. And since the first day, I think I averaged about uh, 500 to 600 um, views. So thank you so much. You know, I'm, I'm still working on, on the YouTube, the YouTube platform <clears throat> and I got to get better at that. So I'm still doing my Facebook live till, till, uh, uh, we don't know what kind of craziness is happening. Thank you, Ceci. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Renee. I love those hearts and those little thumbs up. They're like little gold stars for me. Okay. So uh, where was it? Yes. VIP, uh, visionaries, inspiring purpose. Now think of what that name. Every, every youth that we get to participate in the Visionaries Inspiring Purpose Program are gonna be matched with a mentor, a caring, a loving, an understanding mentor. Um, it's gonna be for males and females. Um, and you guys will be paired up for one year because a true mentoring program has, has to be paired up for at least one year and, uh, and be one-to-one -one because it takes you about six months to actually develop that relationship with this with this youth you know and the majority majority of the people the population that we serve come from single parent homes so anything that you can do to help us out if you can't be a mentor you could donate uh, money if you can't donate money you could donate supplies because they're always going to need school supplies and an art supplies so um, water, snacks, you know, and any of that stuff is, is still a donation and you're still help, helping us, um, you know, do what we need to do with, with our youth. Because if we don't focus on our youth, they're going to grow up out there listening to their friends, listening to the, the, the TV, listening to um, the negative music out there. And, you know, we're trying to create some ethical, socially conscious human beings here. So you have to take a step take, just stand up and, and become a mentor mentoring works mentoring works and if everybody every single one of us had a mentor 
can you imagine a positive mentor, an ethical mentor? Can you imagine how great this world would be? So just keep that in mind, the VIP and, and start telling your friends about it. VIP visionaries, inspiring purpose, because everybody has a purpose. If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. Our goal and our mission is to help you discover it and empower you to fulfill your, your purpose. Okay. Sunday. So we're going to be preaching up in here. So, um, yes, if you want to donate, you click on the link that's provided. If you're not comfortable with, with donating through Facebook, you can go to our, um, our website, you know, it, it, it's under construction, but wait till you see the new website that we're, that we're working on right now through, uh, Kahlo creative. Hi, Gio. Oh, Gio, my mentee. Boom. See, see how the universe works. Every time I'm talking about something wonderful and men mentors and mentees, boom, you pop up. You and Candace are my favorite. Oh, wait, I shouldn't have favorites, right? Thank you, Kimberly. God, you, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Um, mentoring works. Uh, the mentors that, that are still connected with me that had mentees. Oh, thank you, my love. I'm the best. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm still working towards, towards that, you know. You have learned so much from me. For me, right? Oh. <laughs> I know. We, we all need a lot of mentors. I personally had lots of mentors. I still have mentors right now in my life. And if it was not for them, I really truly don't know where I, where I, I would be right now. Okay, so um, PayPal. You could send... Oh, first, I, let's go back to the website. Our website is being created as we speak through Kahlo Creative. Um, Sal Flores and his team are working on our website, and it already looks amazing. It's going to be beautiful, and we're going to have a launch party. Hi, Vero. Hi, my baby girl. We're going to make some ceviche that, that grandma... This is grandma's recipe. Grandma Maria. Um, you could donate... Uh, www.myCFF.org and click on the donate button and it'll take you to a link where you can donate with a card or just go uh, take you to directly to PayPal or you can go to PayPal and um, send a donation to cffocus at gmail.com. Oh, thank you, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. You can, oh, yeah, snail mail. If some people are old school and they don't, you know, trust all this technology. So you can just write a check and mail it off to, um, to our post, our post office, 6475 East Pacific Coast Highway, number 191. Well, you see it all right there. Thank you, Kimberly, for donating. I know I can count on you. Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about more about mentoring and another dynamic program that um, that's coming out out um, in in full force and full effect, and it's called PAR. Police Against Racism. Right? I know you guys are like, boom, with all these question marks. Police Against Racism. And I personally know a lot of the um, board, board members, the, the members themselves, and uh, I've been asked to be part of the, um, the committee. I don't care if I'm just the honorary uh, part of it. I love what they stand for. I love what they what they their goals are and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it in a little bit okay but first let's get to chopping so again you're going to need four cans of um, tuna I like the solid white tuna um, your red onion tomatoes lemon or lime lemon or lime garlic carrot salt and pepper simple okay so um I think I told you guys this before, but I'm going to tell you again. So when you have something round that you're, that you're going to get ready to chop, you always have to cut a, a side, um, cut a side off so that it doesn't, so it, that you don't cut yourself with your knives, especially if they're really sharp, because when it's round, it, you know, it just moves around. But when you cut a piece off, off of it and you place the, the um, flat piece down, you know, you have better, you have better balance. So especially chopping carrots. People hate chopping carrots because they're, they're round and they're long and you know, but what you're going to do is cut little tiny, little tiny squares. So you're going to make like a, a fine dice. So see, now I'm scared to, to hold it like this and I'm going to turn it on the, the, the next flat side. 
because you have to be very careful. These knives um, I just got, and man, I love them. They're so freaking sharp, and they're the, the self-sharpening knives. And for the people who don't like onion, green onion works great. Oh, look at Vero. Look at my daughters <clears throat> chiming in. Yes, um, I was having a conversation with, with my daughter, Joanna, and she's been you know, exploring her, her cooking her cooking skills, so has um, Vero, so has um, Baby Angel. So they've all been exploring that side. And you know, that that's, again, we got to look at the silver lining of this COVID situation. What can you do, I mean, to, to either make money or just to learn a new skill? You have to, you have to, to test things out, you know? <clears throat> and if one thing doesn't work for you, then try something else. Just discover something. Don't just sit there and, and wait for this COVID things to end because, you know, we never know when it's going to end, you know, and, and we never know or we don't know how things are going to look. How are things going to look? So what we've decided at California Families in Focus is to proceed as if this is going to last for years. OK, so <clears throat> we're changing everything up. We're going virtual, we're going, um, we're, we're learning new technology skills, and I know that I can't do it all, so I'm sending our crew to, to learn and to get information through the Long Beach Nonprofit Partnership, which, by the way, you guys, man, if you guys don't know the Long Beach Nonprofit Partnership, well, now they're called, I have to get used to it, the Nonprofit Partnership, because they're not only Long Beach now. They help any nonprofit that <clears throat> that needs help, guidance, or um, <clears throat> or that just wants to to learn learn new skills or reconnect reconnect their their board, reengage their board. Okay, um, so look what I'm doing. They look like little um, what are they called? The, the sticks that you get with your with your um, wings, but they're thinner. Okay, so what you're going to do is do a really fine chop on this because um, this is, this is going to add such a, a delicious crunch to your, to your dish. Okay, so again, stay away from these sharp knives and just curl your fingers and try to hold your knife as close to the cutting board as possible. Okay, I don't want you guys to be doing this or like this because those are not good skills to, to practice. You just keep the tip of your, of your knife on the cutting board and you just move your, your hand like back and forth. Be careful. Now see, it's, I'm making like little tiny, let me see, I'm like making little tiny squares. I'm working on, um, on how, to, how to rig a little camera up here and how to change from one camera, from one view to the next. Stay, I know, I know I keep saying that I'm working on stuff, but it takes me long because it's only me. And we don't have the luxury of having a lot of people. Yes, Renee, uh, they're amazing. They're, it's an amazing crew. It's an amazing crew. And I keep telling them this, but they, they truly care, you know. They make it a point to get to know not only the nonprofit, but the person or the people that are leading the organization. So Christina, Michelle, Carolina, if you ladies are watching, big shout out. I love you ladies so much. You have no idea what you personally have, have done for me. You know, you really have um, helped me stay focused to find my way back. Like I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, yep, the prodigal daughter returned to Long Beach. And uh, you just reminded me what my vision, my purpose is. And you gave me all the tools to, to settle back in to, to what I love to do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So you're going to need a, a big bowl to combine all your your ingredients. So as you're chopping, you want to um, put all of your, wait, I got a little tool for that. Why am I, ta-da, 
this is like a baking thing or, or whatever, but you can, you can get all these handy gadgets um, at your local stores or sometimes Ross has some really good stuff. I don't know. If, I don't know what we're going to do with the shopping, especially if we have to do curbside. I don't even, I don't even get the concept of curbside. How do you know what you're getting? How do you know it's the right thing? Do, is somebody there to help you? Are they going back into the store? If you don't like something, you don't like the color, are you going to try on closing your car? I don't know. Everything's crazy, but we got to, we got to make the best of it. You know, I'm going to keep saying that. Find the silver lining. Some people are just so negative. They don't see a silver lining. Some people really, really are struggling and you know, they're, they're upset and they're, they're bitter and they're angry and I get it. But um, let's try to help each other, you guys. Let's try to help as much as we can. You know, it's going to take all of us to work together to, um, to survive this, you know. And when I say work together, I truly mean it. Like who's, who out there is, is uh, willing to, to step up and say, I, I need help with this or that or I have a great idea. Uh, who has the funds, who has the resources, um, and let's, let's get together and, and, and make things happen. I just got a donation. I got like 60-something face masks from this lady who's, um, who decided that she's, she's going to create face masks, um, not only to, to make ends meet, but she's donating. She's donating a portion, and she's selling a portion, just like Steven with his empanadas, you know, he's selling a portion and he's, um, and he's donating some. And this is what I'm telling, I'm telling you that we, ha we have to create these ethical, ethical leaders, you know, and, and it, we have to, we have to focus on, on our youth. And every time they do something good, highlight it, share the hell out of it or, or tell people about it because I know sometimes they, they don't do it for that, for the recognition but it feels good to recognize them anyway, you know, so that they keep, they could be encouraged to keep doing it. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait for, for this, for this virtual VIP mentoring program to, to begin. I'm excited. I'm pouring my heart and soul into, into creating the curriculum because this is going to be a dynamic mentoring program, and I'm going to provide everything possible for the mentors to not have to, to think too much of what to do with their mentees. You know, every, I'm going to have suggestions. Um, we had, um, well, we, we developed the curriculum for the Little Sisters Mentoring Program that I ran for about seven years out of St. Mary's Medical Center. And this was uh, a particular community. Bec um, it was an interesting community because we were mentoring pregnant and parenting teens. And it was one of the hardest communities to work with because, first of all, like I, I said last time, you know, they're pregnant for a reason. Um, so they obviously need a lot of, um, a lot of uh, help, a lot of attention. Hi, Rosie. How you doing, sweetheart? So um, they obviously did, obviously need a lot of help, and maybe they're not they're not getting the attention from their from their family. Maybe they're they're seeking something. They're missing something, you know. So I had uh, I created a curriculum specifically specifically for pregnant and parenting teens, and the Long Beach the Nat, um, Long Beach nonprofit partnership um, the. I can't remember what what uh, what the other one was called, but we were we were giving a, awards because we were a model mentoring program. Somebody looked at our program and said, "Wow, this program needs to be modeled and um, duplicated," which is which is fine with me. I, I don't when it comes to helping youth, I don't like to say this is my curriculum and you can't use it. Please use it because the more youth we help. And the more teen mothers we help, um, those children that, that, that they have are going to be more capable and able to, to deal with um, society. They're going to have diff a different skill set, you know.
Oh, see? I gotta get used to using my stuff. Just buy it to look at it. So, anyways, I know um, I have some of my men mentees and mentors that, aw, thank you, Renee, for donating. Uh, we, need to, we need the funds. We need to hire uh, program coordinators for, these, uh, for this program because it's going to be so dynamic. It's, I'm going to need three, three coordinators. I'm going to need to hire three coordinators, so I'm going to need a lot of money because, you know, Mentor coordinators are not cheap. They have a lot of work to do. It's going to be um, virtual, but it, there's still going to be a lot of work. You were a pregnant teen, right? You wish these programs uh, had existed at the time. And that's what, um, when, the, when the mentors would join the, the Little Sisters Mentoring Program and they would go through it with their mentees, they would say, where the heck were these type of programs when I was a teen mom? So we need, we just need mentors, you know, whatever, whatever we, we decide to focus on, whatever the niche is going to be, we're, uh, we're going to do it and we're going to do it really well because we owe it to our youth, you know, we keep saying it. Hi, Pat, Pat Lamas. Oh my gosh. That's another one of my, my mentors. She's amazing. Pat, you are amazing. And still out there, still, still working, still providing um, knowledge to the lesbian, the older lesbian community. Thank you so much for everything you do, Pat. You are one of my, one of my women heroes here in Long Beach, and I so appreciate you. And I thank uh, the Lord and the universe for having created you. I'm not alone. Whenever I see you out there, whenever um, I see everything you're doing, and also um, and also the the rest of the women that are part of your crew, I'm just so thankful because you know it's thanks to you all that we get to walk around being proud. Miss Lore, hi, Miss Lore. I'm doing good. I I am blessed. I am blessed. How are you, Miss Lore? How's the husband? We're creating, um, we're creating a mentoring program called Visionaries Inspiring Purpose. So if you know any youth, high school youth, send them my way, okay? And this is, this is for everybody. It's not, um, it's not just for Latinos. It's not just for, for, you know, for one race. It's for every race, okay? So we want to mix. We want a diverse group. We want uh, to explore the, the Cambodian community um, for, for some referrals. We want to explore the African-American community and just, uh, just work together, you know? And that's what we talked about, right, Miss Lore? We need to work together because we owe it to these youth. We need to be the example of unity and, and love and understanding that they need. So if we don't teach them, no one else will. We need to be united and not divided, and we need to teach that. And don't, not only talk about it, not only preach about it, but do it. Just don't walk the, don't walk the, no, well, don't talk the talk if you're not ready to, to walk the walk. I've been walking the walk for close to 30 years, and I'm proud of that. I've been in Long Beach since 94. And um, I started um, working with the youth in Long Beach. So um, I never lost that. I know that the, our youth need us. They need positive leaders. They need um, ethical leaders. Who's that? Billy. Hi, sweetheart. How are you doing? I don't even know what to call you now. Lady Blackbird, right? Lady Blackbird. The beautiful voice with the golden voice. My salsa eating, my salsa eating blackbird. <laughs> this is going to be yummy. 
Marley, and you could you could make this recipe and you could eat the whole bowl because it's healthy. It's healthy, it's refreshing, it's good for you, it's good for you. So um so what about mentors? Can anybody tell me? Does anybody want to share if um uh, if they've had any mentors in their lives that um that really if it wasn't for them you guys would have would have been who knows where mentors are important and i know my my friend doug halbert doug halbert um city prosecutor doug halbert believes 100% in in mentoring and uh mayor robert garcia and and uh doug halbert a few years ago wanted to challenge the community to get involved to become a mentor to to provide internship positions you know for for our youth to get them off the street man you know they could be doing so so many wonderful productive things <clears throat> in a supervised setting with a with a great mentor okay see that doesn't work i tried I tried cutting another way and it didn't work. So the youth can be um, doing some wonderful, productive things that that are going to add to their to their life, to their community service, to their repertoire. You know, so that when they get ready to apply for any grants or apply for a job, they could just pull out a little binder with all their their certificates, with their letters of appreciation. You know, with all this stuff. And um, me personally. Personally, I would I would hire in a heartbeat somebody with a lot of community service than somebody that that didn't do any community service. And I have no idea why the the school district um wasn't requiring it anymore because the more experience our youth have, the better qualified they're going to be and the, and the um the more focused they're going to be on what kind of career they need to focus on because if you if you think you're going to be a police officer and then you have an internship and then you you go through go through what they go through and, and you realize holy crap this is not this is not what I thought it would be you know you don't you don't waste your your years in a career that you're going to hate that you're not going to be passionate about So internship works, mentoring works. I know it looks like a lot, but believe me, this is um this is so yummy. I like the the crunch that it gives to to the ceviche because you have the tuna and the tuna is, you know, is soft. And then you have the tomato, the tomato is soft. The onion has a little bit of crunch. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to do the tomatoes next and then the garlic next. You know why? Cuz I cry when I chop the um let me wash the um I don't know. I'm not going to do it right now. But I just rinse the knife from the carrots. Rene told me to rinse the knife when I get ready to cut the the onion. So I'm going to try that again and see what happens. Who is there? Bob Cabeza, Bob Cabeza. What do you think about mentors? Do you think they work? You know, you just you worked with youth for a long long time, so tell me what we need to do for and with these youth because part of the the curriculum is going to be talking about culture and race and racism and all that stuff, you know? So I'm going to be calling on on a lot of you, a lot of you out in the community. A lot of the the a lot of my friends that do the trainings and the workshops. You're going to receive a email from me asking for your help or your support. And if we could write joint grants Let me know whoever's um interested in writing joint grants let's do that because the more we show the funders the agencies out there that 
we're willing to work together and to share our money and our resources, the, the better, you know, they look at us, not us, but, you know, as a unit, whoever we partner with. So nobody wants to share about mentors in their lives. Who has made an impact in your life? I want to hear stories. I know you guys don't want to be typing and maybe you don't feel comfortable sharing with everybody that's tuning in. It's okay, but I do want to hear the stories. So can you guys, um, yes, can you guys either film yourselves talking about mentors and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a video together and highlight certain people. I want to hear mainly like, like people who are really successful and had mentors in their lives. What was it? What was it that, that made you um, successful? What did this mentor or mentors do for you? How did they help you? Do we need mentoring? Should we focus some of these... Uh, City funds on our youth, on, on, our, on our mentoring programs, you know. Um, I'm going to be sharing a, a bunch of statistics when this, this coming week on me, the, the effects of mentoring. But I want to hear personal stories, you know. Nothing captivates an audience more than, than personal stories, especially if somebody is, is really successful now and attributes it to the mentors that were there to help them, to hold their hand, to guide them, to um, show them where the resources were, to drive them to where the resources were. I just get such a great feeling just talking about it, you know, and, and this is, I don't know if you guys notice, but if every time I, I talk about mentors or youth, youth and empowerment, it's, that's my, that's my main mission in life, my, my goal. And I get so excited because when you find your purpose, your heart knows it, your soul knows it. And that's, that's my purpose. Empower our youth, create ethical and socially conscious leaders, and let them lead the way, like that song says. Hi, Lancha. Hi, sweetheart. Lancha. Hmm. Man, that's a... We never acknowledged each other as mentor and mentee, but the first time I saw Lancha and um, I saw her, how, how focused she was with her photography and um, saw her work, and I asked her to, to be part of our, our, our tribe, our CFF tribe, and be our photographer. Man, she just captured the moment beautifully, and she's just... You're, you're a multi-talented girl. I mean, from creating flyers to websites to media, um, promotion stuff, marketing, to DJing, to photography. You're a Jane of all trades. You're at the keeping, keeping a piece of bread in your mouth helps cutting onions. <laughs> Let's try that. It's funny. Okay. You just want to laugh at me, don't you? It's okay. I have high self-esteem. You can laugh at me. That's too funny. <laughs> so anyways, back to Lancha. Lancha, you are talented, my friend. You're so talented. And I can't wait to see what, uh, what we do together. You know, where, where do you fit in in this, um, in the new renaissance of California Families in Focus because that's what we're doing. We're going to be, ooh, I like this song. We're going to be California Families in Focus, the renaissance. We're going virtual. We're transitioning. We need help though. We need money. These programs cost money. The mentoring programs cost money. The uh, tutoring programs cost money. And it's not like hundreds of dollars. It's thousands of dollars. So that's why we need your help. We need to hire coordinators, but we need to purchase these online programs and make sure that they're quality programs. We don't want to just pair up a, a, a mentor and a mentee and say good luck. 
We want to be there. We want to help. We want to support. Now, if you guys want to add cilantro, <laughs> cilantro to, to this dish, you are more than welcome to. Whatever other vegetables you want to add, add it, please. Oh, did somebody ask for a donating or a donation thing? Sorry, I get so caught up in talking and cooking. And I have a huge imagination. So whenever I'm talking to you about something, I'm imagining it in my head, like what it would look like and what it's supposed to look like. And I get so wrapped up into it. I have a vivid imagination. I, I'm, when it comes to program, creating programs, oh man, I love it. It's like somebody giving me a blank canvas and I'll create you, create a beautiful program for you, which is what um, my side gig has been for many, many years. It's to be a, a paid consultant and develop a mentoring and empowering programs for youth, women too, and men, recovery homes and drug rehab homes, and domestic violence homes. So I'm just gonna use two cloves of garlic because garlic just gives it that yummy taste. If you can't have garlic, then omit it. If you can't have onion, omit it. If you can't have any of this stuff, you better look somewhere else because I don't know what to tell you. There's all these restrictions that people have, you know. I can't eat this, I can't eat that. I'm vegan, gluten free. That's sad. Pay attention to the cutting. Okay, Renee, you're afraid of me chopping my fingers off? I know, these, these knives are super, super sharp. Okay, so for you not to, don't have your hand laying on the cutting board and be chopping. You have to put, place your, your fingers on top of the, the knife and just uh, let them rest there and guide your, your knife with your other hand. Okay, so that's, that's, that's minced enough. I want a, a really, really small, small mince of, with the garlic. You all know why. <sighs> okay, I'm doing it, you guys. The onion is next. Washing the knife. Do I have a piece of bread? Do I have bread? Hmm. How about toast? Is this big enough? Don't be laughing at me. Okay. Wash the knife. I have a piece of bread in my mouth. You guys, tell me something. I'm gonna try it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see if it works. It may look funny, but if it works, I'm doing it all the time. Okay. So. I can't even talk, you can't understand what I'm, you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Red onion, purple onion. Make sure you do this. That's not big enough. Oh man. Oh now you really want to laugh at me. <laughs> okay. Curl your fingers. Chop the onion. What are you? <laughs> the bread needs to soak up the onion fumes. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want me to spit it out and get a new piece? 
Oh my gosh. This is this is like a challenge. I know you guys are probably gonna share this in memes or something. Okay. Alright. Okay. So far no tears. We might be on to something. We might be on to something now. If you guys tell me to jump around in one leg and do all this stuff, I don't know about that. Okay. Be careful with your fingers. Still not crying. <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all are funny. I think you just, I think you guys are just joshing me. Are you joshing me? is there? Kimberly, Carl, no, Elizabeth. Oh, hi Elizabeth, how are you? I'm trying to not to cry. So they told me to put a piece of bread for bread. <laughs> this is too much onion, you guys. I cut a little bit too much. I got too excited. So you can use as much onion as you want. No, you read it. <laughs> Kimberly Flowers, you're so funny. Now you can take a picture and say, look, I told Angel to put a piece of bread in her mouth and she did it. Next, I'm gonna tell her to spin around, stick her tongue out and watch her do it. Okay, now you want a nice fine dice on your onion too. Cause it's all about presentation. You can't even take me serious right now, huh? Okay. Onion. I'm eating the red. Oh, that's good. So after you cut your onion, you can eat your bread. I hope all is well. Everything is, um, everything is in perfect divine order. Or is it divine and perfect order? Something like that. Okay, I'm just throwing this stuff off the... Uh... Mm. I like that bread. Okay, y'all. Thank you, Kimberly. I didn't cry. So, I think we're on to something. Make sure you um, tell people. Make sure you tell people about that. I was talking pretty good <laughs> with that bread in my mouth. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. So, um, look at how pretty this is looking to you guys. You know I love color. I love color. Let me see, can you guys see it right there? Okay. Next, next, we're going to put, we're gonna add the tuna. Yes. Yes. We're, um, you're gonna squeeze, um, open up your cans of tuna and you're gonna squeeze the juice out of it. Okay? Cause you're gonna have enough juice with the, um, with the tomato juice that, that uh, leaked out, leaks out from the tomato and the, the lemon or the lime. So squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Then, don't get scared Renee. Then you're gonna take all of the tuna out of the can. Wow, this is beautiful tuna. And is it bumblebee? I know, I know I shouldn't be giving them props until they give me money, but I want you guys to have a good, a nice, a nice dish. Okay, I need a spoon because 
I know Renee's freak, probably freaking out, thinking I'm going to cut my fingers off. She's probably right. <laughs> okay. Squeeze the juice out of there. And again, remember, you guys, if you're counting calories or if you're like on this um, no carb diet or low carb diet, think of, of yummy and creative things you can do. Colorful, tasty. Uh oh, uh -oh. that one was a little stuck. Okay, yeah, be very careful with with the the tin because you could you could slice your fingers off or just cut cut yourself with the with the tin. And it's a nasty, it's a nasty cut. Yes, I've done it before because I didn't listen to people or I wasn't I wasn't paying attention who's watching oh my gosh I can't see I can't see it all of a sudden the, the messages go up damn it let me see I gotta be nosy I gotta see who's who's and we're dead. Hi, Anne. Welcome. Welcome to our Sunday cooking class. We have amazing students that, that not only um, watch, but they actually create the, the recipes. And then they post pictures or they send me pictures. And it makes me so happy. It's like a proud parent. A proud parent watching their, their kids do something. Wow, this is really, really pretty tuna, you guys. So it's it's bumblebee. Solid white tuna. Albacore. Solid white albacore tuna. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, you guys, is PAR. Police Against Racism. So, you know... It, it seems like an oxymoron, right? Like, what? Police against racism? That doesn't even sound right. Well, these are, um, these are some amazing human beings that are just, you know, experienced. Experienced it uh, while they were, they were working or, or, they, or they see it, they're seeing it now, you know, and they don't like it. They do not like it. And they know the power that police officers have. And um, they're doing something about it. So anytime we get any ethical groups that are forming out there for a positive, that have positive goals and um, that are going to be, that are going to be doing good things for the community, we have to get behind them or right beside them and we have to support them. So I was, um, I was invited to a meeting because I'm no longer just, just supporting or tying my name or our organizations with, with just anybody, you know, you have to be ethical and you have to be doing stuff for the right reason and to help propel the community, to help unite people. And if I find any groups like that, I'm not only going to join you be part of you and be proud of being part of you but i'm going to promote you and, and you know get you out there because that's what we need to do I, it, enough enough with this with this with these racist elitist or people that just don't give a shit about the the community members you know it's not okay to have a a position of power and abuse your power so police against racism Please write this down because I have a feeling that they're going to be nationwide. You know, I have a feeling that 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 these human beings are going to reach all their goals, goals, police against racism. Yes, par for short. Um, they're already working on their social media. So look them up, look them up to stay up to date with, with what they're doing. They're uh, getting off the ground. Oh, I'm rolling the. 
the, the lemons because remember you have to roll your citrus lemons or limes so that you could break all the little juice all the um, the little juice capsules and all the juice goes right to the middle so um, I, I really really want to encourage you all to to look them up to ask if you can attend some of their meetings and this is only for serious people though and this is not for people to go in there and infiltrate what they're doing and go over there and tell other people um, you know to to not like them or to to speak ill about them I'm gonna read you what they're about so um, let me take off my glasses because these are for, to see far Police Against Racism. Police Against Racism is a new organization which you can help influence and create. It consists of sworn members, including active and retired law enforcement and non-sworn members, including faith leaders and community leaders. That's me. This is, this is their, their, their thought process, okay? I hear you. I'm not the enemy. I'm part of your community too. I became a police officer to help, not to hurt people. I will protect you, even if that means protecting you from a fellow officer. I'm going to fight the problems of racism and unnecessary force, even if it increases the risk of my, myself or my career. Just because I, sw I wear a uniform does not mean I'm like them. You know, we, we all have those bad apples and, and you know, it, it's not a good situation if, if you have to be quiet about these bad apples. Okay, so remember what this the statement I just wrote, uh, read to you. Uh, if, if this statement resonates with you, then PAR, Police Against Racism, is for you, and we welcome your input. If you or your friend's career has been impacted because of a race-neutral disciplinary process was, was selective, selectively enforced in a racist way, then PAR is for you. If you are reluctant to tell new acquaintances you are a member of the law enforcement for fear of being being judged by the actions of others, then PAR is for you. If you feel like your world has increasingly gotten smaller and your career has isolated and alienated you from the community once you soar to protect, then PAR is for you. If you saw something wrong and you had the, the chance to speak up but failed to for fear of being ostracized, then PAR is for you. If the only time you feel comfortable around police because of the color of your skin is when you are wearing a police uniform, then PAR is for you. If you're simply tired of the tragedy, the misunderstanding, the anger, and the hate, and you want to make a difference, like, like you once believed you could in the academy, then PAR is for you. This is, this is a group of, of human beings that have stepped up and said enough is enough and we have to rally around them. Their mission statement is um, police against racism strives to dismantle the system of racism that exists within the police, policing and internally encouraging diversity in police hiring and promotion and externally eliminating the, the use of unnecessary force in the field and establishing trust and reconciliation between police officers and the his historically marginalized members of the communities they serve, particularly black members of the community. Now, you know, they, they have, they have um, their pledge their pledge that includes 24 pledges that are all so amazing and that, that I, I pray that, that they truly, truly um, gather as many people as possible because this is something that we've been needing for a long, long time. Right, Ceci, you have two cousins that are police officers. Okay, so Kim was a police officer. She was an ethical police officer. And regardless of what anybody was doing out there, I can tell you for a fact that Kim never used her badge to, to she never badged her way into anything, you know? So it didn't matter who was watching or who wasn't watching. She always did the right thing because she was an ethical police officer. So that's what we need more of. We need transparency. We need people to be held accountable for their actions and we need to support PAR, okay? Police Against Racism. Now, 
you have to, you have to, uh, they have to allow you to become, um, or, or to join any of their, their meetings. And, you know, th this, this may sound intimidating for some people who are already unethical or breaking the law. And, you know, one, one thing I said when they told me about this, this amazing program is that the only people that are going to have a problem with you is the unethical police officers, the ones that are committing all these, these, uh, all these crimes themselves, you know, and you probably need to watch out for them, not for, for community members, not, not, uh, respecting you, but you need to watch out for people who are, who have been racist and, and now feel that they're going to need to change because, you know, there's, there's going to be, um, somebody looking out. So just, I am a little afraid, but I have faith that this whole movement, this whole system um, that is being put in place by com members of the community that truly care is going to work. And, and there's, there's, this, there's this, um, this amazing shift that's happening. You know, it's, it's almost like a fight be between good and evil, and people are finally, finally coming out as as the evil people they are you know they're they're I'm writing this this uh this little poem you know when the when the masks when the masks come off so after we get done with this covid thing when your mask comes off who who are you really or well, the masks are coming off right now man and i'm talking about the 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 mask, the, the person that we hide, you know, who is that person? I, I'm in shock at some of the people that, that, that are coming out as so freaking racist, you know, I'm in shock at uh, a lot of our community members that I thought were, were pretty cool and stuff. And all of a sudden I just see the the hate and the racism that they're, they're proudly putting out there or, or, you know, just adding their two cents and it, it just hurts my soul, you know, and, and, and it's okay. It's okay for, for people not to be your friends anymore. And it's okay for you to, to dismiss them. You are dismissed. If you believe that, that you are a greater, smarter, more powerful race than, than any other, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. But uh, I'm just praying that that uh, that par gets a lot of support, and I pray that um, Mayor Robert Garcia sits down with them and talks to them and listens to them more more than talk. Listen, I'm praying that Robert Luna, our chief of police, sits down with them. I'm praying that the 100 black men um, sit down with them. I'm praying that um, all these community groups sit down and work with with par because we're we're stronger together we are stronger together you know if we want the same things if we want the the system to change then we have to work in a positive way to to make that change to make that to make that shift to um to be part of the evolution you know we must evolve as a as a human race Whatever you guys say, however you guys understand it, you know, the people without vision shall perish. If it's a Bible verse, if it's a, if it's a spiritual verse, we are social beings. And we're all, we're all here. We're all, we're all here. And we're all, we all have to work together. We have to live in the same neighborhoods. We have to shop in the same stores. We have to... Um, be treated with respect you know and it's not hard it's not hard to to you want respect you got to give respect oh somebody else donated thank you somebody else donated thank you so much um so my heart just hurts my heart hurts when 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 i hear of, of people just being hateful and being racist and being elitist and 
and talking, talking crap about the black community, talking crap about the Latino community, you know, and, and I have to say that, you know, you guys, you guys see all these posts about Latinos taking the jobs and Latinos are, are rapists and killers and, and all this stuff. Well, Mexicans in particular, because, you know, they called out the Mexicans. Um, I have to tell you that I am not a rapist. I am not, I don't bring drugs into the country. And a lot of the people that I know are ethical human beings. And if it wasn't for the hard work of the Latinos right now in the fields, I wouldn't have this. I wouldn't be able to do this. And if you say that, that the, the Mexicans are taking your jobs, I want to see your ass out there in a hundred degree weather picking the the cilantro the tomatoes you know doing back breaking hard work we're taking your jobs the mexicans are taking your jobs then get your ass out there and, and stop complaining you want to be a nanny anywhere you look anywhere you look you look in the restaurants i don't care if it's chinese if it's italian if it's if it's american food go look in the back and tell me who is cooking your food tell me who is mowing your lawns tell me who is watching your kids Tell me who is, is doing the most hard, back-breaking work. And good, too. I mean, really good quality work. You know, it, it's, it's time to stop pointing fingers and saying, you know, well, they're on welfare or, or they're, they're, they're um, taking all the money from us. First of all, a lot of these people that really need the, the money from welfare can't get it because they don't have the, the documents to get it, you know? Um, it's just, it's just false stuff that people put out there to just promote hate and you better do your due diligence and use your own freaking mind and, and fact check everything. Because if you're just listening to some hateful person and you're repeating what that hateful person is saying, you're just, it's like a disease. You're spreading this disease. It's like COVID. You're spreading COVID. And if there's one thing that, that if there's a disease that's worse than COVID is racism. That's the real disease that we need to get rid of. That's the real disease that we need to focus on and just figure out how the heck to, to you know, do we have a, a cure for it? Do we have an injection? Do we have, what do we have for it? I have you all and you guys have minds and you all can be part of the solution. You all can join these groups uh, and, and talk about it. Really, really make it your, your commitment. To understand racism to first of all you know like I said last time in order for us to truly fix a problem we have to admit that there's a problem so, so for many many years people don't people have not seen a problem with racism and you know why because they're very very doing very well with with the people that are down here and um, they don't see a problem because it's not affecting them you know until it affects you, until things hit home, that's when you start reacting and, and want to be proactive. But you're being reactive instead of being proactive, you know. So it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart to, to just racism. It hurts my heart, period, you know, because I'll tell you all that, that I am all these races, you know. I am Asian. I am African. I am um, European. I am... Um, Mediterranean. I have so many, so many um, different um, races, ethnicities. To, I mean, I have so, so, so much different blood running, running through my veins, and I'm proud of it. I am proud of it. You know, I'm proud of my my certain percentages. We just need to to really, really look at the, the real issues that are going on. And I, and I truly believe that, this, that the silver lining with COVID, how many lemons did, did, did I use? I used two lemons, okay, really juicy lemons. Um, the silver lining with this COVID thing is that we're able to sit, put some salt to taste. So put a little bit in there, mix it, and then um, taste it. And if it needs more, this is the time to add it. A little bit of pepper. So the silver lining to me with, the, with COVID is that we're able to stay home 
and we don't have all those distractions, all the parties, all the, you know, getting up and get dressed up and try to keep up with the Joneses to, to go over their house or, or whatever, you know, we don't have all those distractions. So we're, we're being given a, a forced time out. So we have a time out to think about what really matters. And now that you, you don't have all these distractions, you can really read, you can understand, you can empathize, you can try to try to see what, what is really going on and what you can do. What, what, what is your part in all of this? You know, do you just sit there mad and pouting because we can't go out and socialize with our friends? Or do you say, what can I do now from where I am using whatever I have to, to make a difference? What can I do? I think now is a perfect time because I was thinking, man, we're going to have to shut our, our, our programs. We're not going to be able to, to, um, time to see who you really are. And that's the, that's the truth. When your mask comes off, who are you really? Who are you? You put on your, your, your mask in your mouth, but you take off the mask from your, from your eyes, your face, you know, look at yourself first. Look at yourself first. Who am I? Talk to the man in the mirror like Michael Jackson says, oh, that's one of my favorite songs. The man in the mirror with Michael Jackson. You know, listen to that song today. Okay. I want you guys to sit down, put that song on and listen, put it, put on your headphones, cover your eyes and just listen to every word that song says. And then listen to, um, who was it? Whitney Houston. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Listen to those two songs. It's about our youth, man. They're hurting. They're hurting and, and um, they're looking for answers. The answers that we could give them. You know, the reason why I truly believe that what, the reason so many youth commit suicide is because of the pain that they feel. Not to, not to piss off their parents or to piss off the community or for attention. They're committing suicide because they're in pain. Now, what can we do as a society to help ease that pain? What can we, what can we tell them? What, what, what can we give them? What can we, um, what can we help them through? How can we hold their hands? Swear I didn't, I didn't. I didn't key up that, that song. Lean on me. Renee, that was your and Kim's song growing up. It's a beautiful song. And that should be our, our, our theme song for the VIP program. Um, we need your help, you guys. We need your help. Now, through um, Long Beach Gives, through Long Beach Gives, we're going to be raising money. Our goal is $10,000 for the VIP mentoring program. Hi, Vero. How are you? How's my beautiful boy doing? So our goal is to raise $10,000 for our Visionaries Inspiring Purpose Mentoring Program, which is going to be a social emotional, social emotional learning program. So what that means is that we're going to be providing the teens with a mentor. We're going to be working with their, with their mothers to develop their skills and um, just empower them to, to do whatever it is that, that they've been wanting to do. You know, did they want to go back to school? Did they want to start their own cooking classes? Did they want to be a makeup artist? Do, are they interested in fashion design? What is it that they want to do? Because the more empowered a mother is and the more resources she has, the more empowered her kids are going to be. You cannot give a child what you don't have yourself. So we're going to work with the, with the mothers. If the fathers want to join, that's fine too. But we, we've seen that it's mainly the mothers that, that respond better to, to these programs. So the teens are going to get a mentor, an ethical mentor. The mothers are going to get support groups that deal with mental health, fo focusing, mental wellness, focusing on the mind, body, and spirit, and their siblings are going to go through the AMT program, which is art, music, poetry, and dance, and they're going to learn how to be ethical leaders using music, art, dance, and poetry. 
and the entire um, family can be learning the same thing at the same time using age-appropriate tools. And, you know, I, I just think it's going to be a beautiful program. I can't wait for you all to... I, I'm really mixing, mixing a lot because I, I want the chunks to break up and I want the lemon to get all over the... Um, all the ingredients to I want the tuna to soak up the lemon and so forth so that's why I'm mixing and mixing and mixing but this is I'm telling you my mom used to make huge bowls of this and well there was a lot of us and we would just come into the to the kitchen grab ourselves some tostadas put this on the tostada and I swear I could eat about 10 of them hey I had a, a good metabolism when I was younger now I could probably eat two. <laughs> but anyways, you guys, um, please help. If, if I'm, if I'm um, sending you per, a personal email and asking you to give me either your, your statement of, of mentors, you know, did you have a mentor in your life? If I'm asking you to, to share information with your contacts, please help me because it's not for me. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep telling you this. It's not for me. Um, I have everything I could possibly want and need in this world. I'm just worried about our youth and I'm worried about uh, the future. Um, we have to be there for them. We have to hold their hand. We have to guide them. We have to encourage them. We have to inspire them. And we have to teach them how to be ethical leaders and then just push them out there and let them lead. Let them lead us, you know. <sighs> I get so preachy on Sundays I get preachy because I'm a minister did you guys know I was a minister I'm a minister I could marry you I could bury you I've done a few of those I don't like them I don't like doing the the funerals but I've done quite a few of those I I'd much prefer to do weddings I've done quinceañeras um, and it's fun. It's fun to be a, a minister because you, it's almost like you're a counselor. You get to, to tell people, you know, like um, give them advice and so forth. And, and you get to, by the powers vested in you, just join two, two souls and make them one. You know, that's, what I, that's why I love um, marrying people. You get to see these two individuals just become one. And um, I love that. I don't promote it a lot. And I think I should more, prom promote it more. Hmm. I just, I just, I'm all over the place, right? I can't stay still. That's, that's what an adult with ADD, an, an adult with ADD, <laughs> ADHD uh, does. We just can't be still. We get bored. Okay. So now that you've mixed up your wonderful, um, ceviche tuna ceviche you're gonna find a pretty little bowl to serve it in and you know i tell you guys all the time presentation presentation is key so you transfer your tuna ceviche into your serving bowl because you're not gonna serve it in the same bowl you mixed it you can but you know if you have people over or or if you just are having a party or if you just want to Take pictures of your food, put it in a pretty serving bowl. Now, I have to admit that it is missing some green. So if you guys want to add some, some cilantro or some jalapeno, please do so. And you're going to see it just come alive. Sunshine. Hi, sunshine. Oh, my gosh. Just talk about ethical and beautiful human beings. Such sunshine day and I have known each other for a long time and you're one of those girl you're one of those people that I could look at and just smile because I know that that we're doing stuff to to help our youth our community you know and and sunshine is also um oh I don't want to say minister are you a minister or are you a reverend I think you're a reverend right reverend sunshine day yeah I'm just a minister 
you got to do more more schooling and more stuff to become a, a reverend and then you can lead your own church and stuff but um i just i just talk about life man i just use my own life experiences because a lot of the times even even like people who who went to college and stuff you know they have like no social skills because all they did was go to college and i'm not knocking i'm not knocking them and i'm not knocking uh their education you know but uh there's nothing like that hardcore i hit the bottom but now i'm here Ooh, isn't there a song for that too started from the bottom now i'm here just made my donation i love you sunshine i love you so much such a beautiful freaking soul i cussed on a sunday thank you sunshine so look at this you guys it does need green it does need green i'm gonna admit it but it tastes good just like this okay so and then you could just serve this with with another bowl with chips or if you're gonna serve your friends already if you're gonna serve your friends then you could get a nice pretty little bowl put some chips around it and just make them feel real special now these are th these are clean and simple um recipes but uh i remember sunshine your wife sunny has such a strict um has such a strict diet man and she is disciplined she's gorgeous too sunshine and sunny sunshine and sunny day <laughs> beautiful names so okay This is soul food, Zen cooking with Angel Macias. Thank you. I start my diet tomorrow and this fits right in. Yeah, the only thing that, that probably has a little bit of sugar are the carrots. But you know, that that's like um, natural sugar. It's not like the artificial stuff that you put on there or like the, the real cane sugar that you put on, on anything. Um, so that I could see carbs in there, but um, this is so refreshing. So refreshing. You're going to love it. Let me give it a taste. Mmm. 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 So good, guys. Mmm. The lemony. The lemony taste paired with the onion and the, the sweetness and the crunch of the of the carrot is just perfect it's perfect and i didn't i didn't create this my mom did and i think she put a lot of carrots just because there was so many kids and she would always try to try to stretch her food as much as she could you know like when she made eggs she made she chopped up a gang of uh, potatoes like a lot of potatoes and and made it stretch you know so um it's amazing what what you can create when and you're you're in need or, or you're poor or you, know, you have a bunch of kids my mom always had kids living with us so she not only had all of us but she had my cousins living with us all the time and it was literally I'm not lying my sister can attest, my brothers can attest. There was always like 15 to 20 people living in a two bedroom home sharing one bathroom. I was one of the girls. It was mainly boys and it was crazy. I didn't have no privacy. I didn't have privacy. I had to sleep in the living room. I'm still mad at that. I was talking to, to my mom and I tried to keep her, her mind fresh. So I was, I was asking her if she remembered um, me being mad because for some reason, strange reason, the Latina families, especially Mexican families, catered to these boys and these men. And it was me, the ratio was me, my sister was six years younger than me, me to about 
probably eight boys. And they were from, from my aunts. You know, they, they traveled to the United States for a better life too. So they were from my aunt. My mom and I would cook, we would clean, we would fold clothes, we would iron their clothes. And you know, it was like, we were catering to these, to these boys and to these men. And I would always complain and tell her, they have two hands. Why the heck are they not making their own damn food? And why are they not washing their own clothes? But my mom, that's the kind of person she was. She really, really took care of all my cousins. And, um, you know, I pobrecitos, they don't have their mom here. And if their mom was here, she would be doing it too, you know. So I didn't, I didn't care. I didn't understand. I was mad all the time. And then when she wasn't there, I had to do it all by myself. So I, I grew up with uh, being envious of being a boy. I wanted to be a boy. How come I wasn't born a boy? Then I would have somebody else catering to me. But um, I'm happy I was, I was a girl. This is our final, whoa, <laughs> I almost spilled the final product. This is our final product. Um, it's really good, you guys. Good, clean eating, okay? I'm gonna add a jalapeno. I'm gonna add a jalapeno to some of this because I could already see the jalapeno, um, the jalapeno, how, how the jalapeno would taste, okay? so. I'm gonna take pictures pictures of this. I'm gonna post it, but I got a quick, I got a quick drink. It's a spritzer, real easy. It's, it's hot out there. If you wanna have, get your drink on, you would do something real quick and easy and refreshing with three items, okay? So you grab a nice pretty cup. You're gonna need some seltzer water. I like pomegranate. I have pomegranate seeds. And I have some Prosecco or some sweet champagne, any type of a sweet champagne that you want. Now this is really easy. <gasps> oh, oh. oh my gosh, I should have had my assistant open this before because it still scares me. Remember, I did this once. I could do it again for brunch. And she said, just hold the top and twist. Woo! Okay, I did it. So what you do is you pour your um, pomegranate seeds in your cup. You pour your pomegranate seltzer water. And I like to do equal parts. But you can add, you know, if you really, really want to get a little buzz on, you could add a little bit more champagne to that. Is that half? Okay. Then you're going to grab your champagne. You just let it all mix. If you can't drink alcohol, then just do the pomegranate seeds. Do a mocktail. That's what Kim used to call them. Do a mocktail. Do pomegranate seeds with your seltzer. Look at how pretty that looks, you guys. And see the seeds start bouncing up and down. Can you see them? That's my favorite part. They just go up and down. Taste it. Mmm. Get you on the seeds, bust all the little juice open. Wow, this is really good. This is refreshing. You have one just to, you know, relax and chill out. I know you can have tea too, but it's not as fun. All right. So, again, you guys, happy Sunday. Please make these dishes, these recipes, post them, um, post them online or send them to me. It makes me happy. It really does. You don't, you, you guys have no, no idea how happy I get. Um, remember we're raising money for our visionaries inspiring purpose. 
Thank you for everybody. Thank you to everybody who donated. Thank you for, for watching and tuning in and just being such faithful followers. I'm going to be doing more of uh, every, every video I, I create, I post it on YouTube. So check my YouTube out just so you could uh, get all the, it's only recipes on YouTube. Okay. Soul food, Zen cooking with Angel Macias. Donate to the VIP mentoring program. Also through the Long Beach Gives. It's right on there. And big, big, big thank you to the nonprofit partnership. Big thank you to everybody who has been donating and supporting us all these years. Um, please look into PAR, Police Against Racism, and inquire about becoming a member because what we're looking for right now is 100 members, but I'm absolutely sure that we're gonna surpass that because ethical people need to join ethical groups and be noticed and be recognized and, and do good for the community. We're stronger in numbers, we're stronger together. And I, I wish you a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. What I say, stay positive, but test negative. Create this and enjoy. I love you all. Till next time.